Well, I have one of my most uh, interesting stories to give you today. And uh, before we do that, let me read a verse. I just look at one word in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, where the Lord Jesus is sending forth his people to take the message of the gospel around the world. And he says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and, says the New King James, to the end of the earth. Now, the King James says the uttermost part of the earth. And this word uttermost or outermost is actually the word uh, eschatos, from which we get our word eschatology. In other words, the doctrine of last things, the prophetic events that are still to come. So that's the idea. The farthest, the outermost, go to the last island, to the last person, to the last jungle clearing, wherever those people are, go to them and tell them too. Well, this is a story that I first heard from an elder of a local church in Philadelphia. And it was such a great story, I thought, I better check this out myself. And so I wrote a letter to the missionary and asked if he would send me a detailed story concerning this event so that I had the facts from his own pen. Uh, the missionary's name was Desmond Derbyshire. He and his wife, Grace, returned to Brazil and went to a very small village called Kasawa on the Naunda River, which is a tributary of the Amazon, among a very small tribe of the Hickscarianas. There were only about a hundred of them at that time, but as a result of their care and concern for the tribe, it grew during their tenure there to about 600. But he committed himself to learning their very difficult language and giving them a Bible in their own heart language. Uh, spent about seven years on that project. One day he was working on his translation and as evening came on, he had turned on the radio, and if the atmospheric conditions were just right, uh, he could sometimes get a skip from Miami, from a radio program there across the Caribbean, and it would actually reach into the area where he was in the Amazon. It was uh, November 22, 1963. He was listening to the radio and heard the shocking news that John F. Kennedy had been assassinated on the streets of Dallas, Texas. Well, he was very concerned, listened through the night. And the next day, the Indians came to him and said, something bad has happened. They could tell by his demeanor. And he said, well, yes, the, the chief of the Americans has been murdered by one of his own people. They were shocked at this. In any case, a time went by. And in 1965, uh, John F. Kennedy's brother, Robert, was considering running for the presidency, and uh, he knew that he wasn't very well known for his foreign policy, and so he decided to take a junket through South America and get some photo ops of him meeting with various people in these countries and thought it would be good for his uh, hopes for the presidency. And so it was that as he spoke to the authorities in the capital, uh, they told him a rather unusual thing. They said, you know, there's a, a very small tribe way back in the Amazon jungle, what, one of the tributaries, and these people somehow heard about the assassination of your brother. We have no idea how these Stone Age people heard this, but they were so concerned, and, and they gather Brazil nuts and rosewood and bring it out there uh, to the main river, and they trade with Portuguese traders, and these traders, in talking with them, discovered that Kennedy had been assassinated from these Stone Age people, and they brought the news back to the capital. Well, Bobby said, those are the people I want to visit. The only way he could get back in there was a float plane to fly them back in there, and they made this long journey, uh, came in and landed on the river not far from where the Derbyshires had their little hut. When they landed, the, the pilot said, I didn't realize the river level was so low. There's no way I'm going to be able to take off with a full payload. Uh, I'm going to have to leave, go out, refuel, and uh, they're going to have to get you down below the rapids to a better place on the river, 
and I'll come back uh, and pick you up in a couple of days. And so it was that uh, Bobby Kennedy and a couple of his aides ended up spending uh, three days with the Derbyshires in the heart of the Amazon jungle. Well, some very interesting stories uh, told during that time. In fact, they went for a swim in the river, and uh, at one point Bobby said, what's the name of this river? And when he was told, he said, I have to remember that because this is the place where I decided to run for the presidency. But uh, he asked one of the Indians, of course, this is all by translation work through uh, Desmond Derbyshire, but he asked him, uh, what do you like to do the best? You like to hunt, you like to fish. And the fellow said, well, actually, I like to study the Bible the best. <laughs> and Bobby Kennedy put up his hands and said, where are we? He was so astounded there in the middle of the Amazon that this man liked to study the Bible. Well, one evening, I think the last evening, they were sitting around the fire and conversing, and, and Bobby had been so impressed at the compassion that these Stone Age people had shown for him. They wanted to know about his brother's widow and about the children. Told them we've been praying for them, for God's comfort for them. And he was just so blindsided by this. And so uh, finally at one point he asked the chief of the tribe, a man named Waraka, um, Waraka, why would you give up your people's native ways, which you practice for thousands of years, and embrace Christianity. And Waraka said, well, perhaps you didn't know what our ways were. We hated each other. We killed each other. We ate each other. We were afraid of the dark. We were afraid of death, afraid of the demons. And this man came and told us about the God who made us and how he loved us and cared for us and how he could save us, deliver us from our fears and give us a home with himself beyond the sky when we died. Why would we not give up our native ways for a message like that? And for the next little while, through Desmond Derbyshire, this dear man, Waraka, poured the gospel into Bobby Kennedy's heart. Well, eventually the plane arrived and they uh, made it back uh, after the completion of their trip to the United States and as you know, uh, Bobby Kennedy was killed as he had just won the California primary in running against Johnson in the Ambassador Hotel in Los Angeles. I told the story somewhere and a young man came to me and he said, you know, when Bobby Kennedy was assassinated, uh, I was not a Christian, but I heard that his last words as he was dying on the floor, his last words were, is everybody else okay? He said, at that time I was a Hindu, but I when I heard him say that, I thought, he must be a Christian if he's worrying about other people in the moment of his own death. I don't know whether Bobby Kennedy was a Christian or not, but I do know this. The Bible says that there will be representatives from every kindred, that's of every family, every tribe, every nation, in the choir in heaven. And it could well be that Bobby Kennedy is one of those who will be there. Whatever the case, as I thought about this story, it, it came to me with tremendous force how far God is willing to go to bring the gospel to a soul. The best person to share the gospel with Bobby Kennedy was Waraka. There was no question of Protestant versus Catholic. There were no arguments about church dogma. It cut right to the issue, didn't it? Well, how are we going to do this? Well, I'm going to have to get Desmond and Grace Derbyshire from England into the Amazon jungle. And I'm going to have to have the atmospheric conditions just right the night that Kennedy shot so that Desmond Derbyshire can hear the radio broadcast coming from Miami. And uh, then, of course, we're going to have to get Bobby Kennedy down into Central and South America. And we'll have to have these Portuguese traders take the message from the Amazon to the capital. This is the equivalent of getting a message cross country from Washington State to Washington, D.C. And then, of course, we're going to have to have the water level just right so the plane can land, but it can't take off. And so God said, well, we'll do that. 
the marvelous love of God in orchestrating a conspiracy of love surrounding people with his witnesses. And God is going to prove his case that he has done more than enough to reach souls to the uttermost part of the earth.